Welcome to the Thunderbird Farm Handcrafted. My name is Genevieve and I'm super excited to start this next series of YouTube videos with you all here in the creativity corner, my sewing room and crafting studio. I'm going to be sharing with you today something that I feel is super important if you have a small crafting or creativity space like I do. We have a farmhouse and if you've ever been in a farmhouse you know that those rooms are very small. We've made an addition but that has a lot of our living area and so this bedroom aka basically a closet has become my creativity corner. That makes it really difficult to find storage or to pre-prep projects, especially if you like to cut out your projects all in one day, like batch them, and then you have them sitting all around. You can't necessarily work. You end up losing things. You forget to order your hardware, whatever it might be. So I found these project bags from another YouTube video. I'll share that link in the details. Uh, but this project, I've kind of added my own little flair to it to make it so that they can be hanging in my closet with fabric so that when I am ready to work on those projects, to sew them, they're ready to go as well as the pattern in with them. So I'm gonna share with you how I go about uh, making these project bags specifically for me and what are the little added things that I've done to them to make them uh, be efficient and work for me in my space. If you're new to the Thunderbird Farm Handcrafted, I would love if you click subscribe so that you can be alerted whenever I have a new video available. They're usually on Monday mornings, so just keep that as a note so that you can sew along with me. Also, I will have timestamps across the bottom of the video so that you can skip ahead when we get to the sewing part or if you want to skip ahead to the healing part because I always share the healing of crafting because the healing part is always part of the crafting uh, and I like to share with you how each project created some sort of healing or what I feel is the lesson in that project for me. So we are going to be making these project bags. So you might have seen these, uh, they're not anything unique necessarily, but I have added some unique little twists that I really didn't see anywhere. So first of all, they are able to be hung up. So many of us have wire hangers someplace in our house uh, and we're always wondering what to do with them, how to get rid of them, um, because they aren't really the best to hang our clothes on. Um, but uh, we get a plethora of them here in my house because my husband wears a uniform. Um, so whenever they come back from a cleaner, we end up with lots of new hangers. So, uh, I use these because I also don't want them necessarily hanging um, you know, or setting someplace. I don't have some place to just like set these project bags. I don't have a lot of um, counter space other than my cutting table. So I wanted a way to hang these up. Um, the other thing that I wanted to make sure that they had is that they were kind of good and sturdy. So they are interfaced with some fusible fleece. Uh, and also I wanted a way to be able to put the pattern that I was using in side and to keep it all in one place. So I've added a sheet protector into the side so that that pattern that is this project is in here along with the cutout pieces. I also, um, I always put all my hardware and any webbing or anything in like a Ziploc bag that goes along with the project. So that's in here. Uh, and then I also, because I get sunlight in my um, creativity corner, I also wanted a way to keep it from fading, especially if I left them sitting out here hanging on my cabinet. I have a window here and I have a window there. So I wanna make sure that my fabric, if I don't get to this for six months, who else has been there, um, that my fabric doesn't fade. So that's why I'm also using, instead of clear vinyl on the front, I'm using a darker color. Black is what I would prefer um, for you as well, but they do have darker colors like purples and things like that. You could really make it any color you want, um, but I, I wanted it a little bit darker to help it keep it from fading if I don't get to it in the length of time that I want. So this is the project we're going to be doing today. Join me, check out the supplies, and then we will get to the sewing part. Let's go over the supplies that you're going to need to make these hanging project bags for your sewing room. Or if you have a friend who has a small space, I think this would be a great gift for someone who is a sewer or a crafter. 
that has a small crafting area uh, like I do here at the Creativity Corner. So let's talk about the supplies that you're going to need for these project bags. So you are going to need a metal hanger at the end. So if uh, you have these, they're readily available to us. My husband wears uniforms, and so when they come back from the cleaners, there's always a nice, shiny, new metal hanger. Um, so definitely you'll need a metal hanger, but we won't need that till the very end. Then you'll need a sheet protector. I'm making two. Um, I have enough for two cutouts, so I have two sheet protectors here, but you're only going to need one. Unless you do want to put more than one in, um, I'm only going to show how to put one in. It might be a little, you might need to put some double-sided tape um, if you're going to put more than one just to keep them from sliding when you're sewing, um, but I'm only putting one in mine. You're going to need uh, two uh, pieces, full pieces. This is, I cut on the fold so that these are my two pieces of 18 by 20 lengths of fabric. Okay. So the, this is our exterior and our lining. Okay. So that's what that piece is of quilt cotton. And then you're going to need six, two inch lengths. Um, and so I, these are for mine, so I don't even care that the, um, bias on the end is there. That doesn't matter to me. Um, I'm just making these for here in the creativity corner. So you're going to want two inch strips, uh, to be able to, uh, do your framing part. You're also going to want an 18 by 20 piece of fusible fleece. So that's going to go in the, in between of your exterior and your lining. You're going to want a 13 and a half by 13 and a half piece of a dark see-through uh, vinyl. I chose black uh, only because if you're like me and you have projects sitting around in your room for a while, your the sun is going to hit them. I wanted something that's going to keep them from any type of fading. Um, so I uh, definitely uh, use something that's a colored. I instead of clear you can still see through this um but you're not necessarily the, the light isn't going to hit it um like it would if it was a clear a clear vinyl you can definitely use clear vinyl but i feel like the more protection to your fabric the better you're going to want a 17 inch piece of your zipper tape and a zipper pull i'm using number five and i'm just using what i have available uh, to my to me that isn't for any other project uh, and so that's why they're kind of mi mix matchy but it looks good in the end you want your thread for whatever machine you're going to be using I am going to be using my sale right um, you this is totally a domestic friendly project um, so I have my thread for my sale right you want your cutter uh, your your 24 inch ruler 24 by 6 your uh, rotary cutter with a good blade. Make sure your blade has changed. Uh, this is half inch bias tape. I do have a link for that in the details. Uh, you can make your own if you want, um, but I had this black readily available, so I'm using that. Clips will definitely be beneficial, as well as an iron with some steam to do your fusible fleece. And that is pretty much it. All of the measurements for these are in the details for you so that you can duplicate this project. Before we get starting with the sewing, we need to interface our lining and our exterior pieces uh, with the foam interfacing. Now remember, I cut these on the fold, so I'm just going to iron these so that the wrinkles are out and then I'm going to put that interfacing in between the two, sandwiched in between the two, and we'll be ready to go. I am using, if you're um, not new to the channel, you will notice I have a new tool here. I have a new Rowenta iron. She is amazing. And this is my little PSA for this. I'm by no means selling this. I have no clue how long it will last. What I will say is my iron that I replaced this from um, was a Black & Decker. It was 20 years old. You don't realize how something doesn't work 
until you have the new one. Uh, and I will tell you that I was struggling with the iron I had for a very long time. And this was not an expensive iron by, I mean, irons can be quite pricey. Um, but all the reviews, everything that I read up on it was really, really good. Um, I guess I'll, I'll show you here if you do want to look for it. I don't know if you can see what is written on the side, but it's the Rowenta uh, Excess Esteem. And um, it's the 1725 watt. Uh, and I tell you, it's, I'm so happy with it. So we're gonna, we're gonna use that today. First thing I'm gonna do is iron out some of these wrinkles on this fabric that I am using as my exterior and my lining. Now we can get to the sewing part, the actual sewing part. Uh, and what we're going to work on is we're gonna work on making our framed front, okay? So what we're going to do with this is we want to get two of these um, pieces, these strips that we cut, okay? And we're gonna do the two sides, all right? We're gonna do the two, uh, the left and the right side. Now one of the sides we are going to be adding our sheet protector into it. So you want to think about how do you want this sheet protector to lay inside. So do I want it to be this direction on the inside or do I want it to be this direction on the inside? I think it just depends on personal preference. So that is going to be sandwiched in. You want to make sure that you're leaving, I mean I just eye this, but that you're leaving probably about an inch or so at the top for this as well as at the bottom you're going to have about an inch at the bottom. And then we're going to sandwich our plastic piece in between. I'm leaving the paper on. Um, definitely if you are doing this on a domestic machine, you will want to leave the paper on. You might even want to cut another strip of paper to put over top of this piece. Um, but uh, for my sale right, I don't need that, but I am leaving the paper there just just to be safe with it, just to, to hopefully let it go through nice and smooth. So I'm going to do that. I'm gonna uh, sandwich this together and then I'm going to put a piece over here and then we're just going to do a, um, a quarter inch seam allowance and then we're gonna top stitch the top of those. So I'm gonna clip that and then we're gonna go over to the machine and do it. Make sure that the top of your sheet protector is the top, <laughs> not towards the bottom. Pay attention to where you're putting it. So I'm going to sandwich this in between the paper. Make sure that's where I want it to be. And there we go. So now remember my top is up here. So I'm just going to go and stitch a quarter inch on each side and then we're gonna top stitch. All right, so like I said, we are going to do a quarter inch seam allowance. Um, you want your stitch to not be super tiny, especially on uh, vinyl. I have mine at a two and a half. Uh, and so you don't want it to be too tiny or it's gonna kind of rip. It'll perforate your, your vinyl, especially this that I have. It's a little bit thinner than like the TPU vinyl. Um, so make sure that you, uh, mm -hmm increase your stitch length. So again, we're gonna uh, back stitch at the beginning and the end and we're just gonna go straight down through. a little off. Okay, we're gonna 
do the other side. Same thing, back stitch beginning in the end. could take this over to your iron if you wanted to um, but because this is it's really easy to just fold it over and finger press it now we're just going to top stitch that I am going to increase my stitch length a little bit to three and a half and we're just gonna do a top stitch right down down through both of our sides on. Now we're going to uh, add our bottom and then we're going to do our zipper. We're going to now add the bottom um, and that's where you want to make sure which is the bottom and which is the top. So I want to look at my sheet protector and see where's the top. So there's where my sheet protector is opening. So this is the top. This is the bottom. I'm going to just clip this piece to the bottom and then cut it. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut that. And as you can see, this isn't gonna be long enough for me to do the top. So I need to get another piece All right, and I'm just going to line that piece up to the top. Try to, since my pieces are a little bit longer, make sure you're lining it up to your um, plastic, to your vinyl. I'm gonna line that all the way across. I'm gonna cut that. And I'm gonna also cut a second piece. Because remember, we're putting a zipper up here in the top. So I'm gonna cut that second piece, the length that I need it. And then I'm also going to thread my zipper. So again, to do a zipper, you always, if you don't have a zipper jig, you pull it apart at the top and you look for which tooth is the higher tooth. And that's the one you want to put your zipper on first and then thread the other side. And then if you just press the top of it, it should slide right on for you. Okay. So we're going to take that over because we're going to be putting the zipper on once we have these two, the top and the bottom on, and then we'll piece this on for the top piece of the zipper. Okay, we're going to set our zipper and our top piece to the side. We don't need that just yet. Don't lose it off the side of your table. <laughs> and then we're going to just do, again, decrease your stitch amount. Um, if you had it at the top stitch, again, I have mine at a two and a half. Um, and we're going to just back stitch the beginning and the end. Do a quarter inch seam allowance along both.
Okay. Same for the other end. And now we're just gonna top stitch those. Apollo's gonna come say hi. Now, here's where you can take the um, paper off. And this helps if you have nails. If you don't have nails, you can use the scissors. But I leave it in between. It's not a big of a deal to leave it in between there. But this is where you can rip the paper off because we're soon going to attach it. You could wait till you put the zipper on if you wanted. That's completely up to you. So this is where you can rip that paper off. Clean it up a little bit if you want. I'm not too concerned because, again, these are just for my sewing room. I'm not giving them as gifts. If I was giving them as a gift or selling them, I would definitely clean them up a little bit. But now, we want to add our zipper. Now, remember, we always want our zipper to open to from the left to the right. So, we want to make sure that our zipper is put on correctly. So, my zipper is going in that direction. And I'm just going to clip that in place. It should be just a tad bit longer uh, than your, your frame here. Okay. I'm gonna bring my stitch length back down again. All right, and I'm going to, because I'm using a narrow foot uh, on my sail right, you might want to use your zipper foot here. I'm, I'm going to, it's going to be slightly bigger than a quarter inch because I'm going to follow right along my zipper, okay, to put this on. stitches all right and now we're going to top stitch our zipper threads down here out of the way all right now we're going to put our top piece I'm gonna lay that try to line it up with the bottom piece that you have okay that way it's you could notch this if you wanted to make sure that everything is centered for you Apollo's barking at somebody 
possibly my husband one having a breakfast sandwich pop up. Oh, no, that sounds like he sees something. All right, so we have this clipped in place. And we're gonna, again, I have my narrow foot on, but you might wanna put a zipper foot on so you can get right up along that zipper. And we're going to decrease our stitch to the two and a half again. And we're going to top stitch this, pull this thread out of here. Now we have our top completed. So what we're going to do is we're now going to go over to the table and we're going to line this up on top of our piece that we interface with the fusible fleece and we're going to just square it up um, so that everything is square and clip it. So here we are. We have it laying on top of our piece that we have fused. Okay. And we want to make sure that uh, on your cutting table, you just want to kind of look and see where your lines are to make sure that you have it all squared up. And then we're going to get our 24 by six and we're just gonna line things up, square them up. Now that's taking, um, I'm, that's like about, it depends on how much you wanna have. I think I'm gonna do an inch and a half. I'm lining it up with where I have my line for my frame. And then I'm going to take my rotary cutter and I'm just going to follow right along there. Oh, we rent the zipper. We need the, come on, baby, you can do it. There we go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to clip keep that in place so when we're ready to sew it and I just do three clips until I cut the other pieces so the same way here let me move this clip down I'm gonna do an inch and a half along the bottom So now we're going to take this and we're going to baste it. We need to remember we need to leave a little bit of a hole for the um, hanger to come through. So that's where we're going to start and stop our baste. Okay, so you can measure it. You know, like now it's 16. So the center is at the eight mark. All right. And we just need a tiny hole. So like, I'm only gonna, I'm gonna like, maybe it's, maybe it's a quarter inch opening. 
okay? So that's what we're gonna go and do. We're gonna just baste it all the way around. But we're gonna leave that opening um, so we have that to put our hanger through. Like I said, we're gonna leave a little opening here when we baste, okay? So I'm just gonna put my, um, like probably like close to the back of my foot where I made that mark. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we're basting, so we're going an eighth of an inch all the way around. opening I kind of leave my threads a little bit longer here so I can see where that opening is we can always burn them down later all right so we've based it all the way around everything's secure now we're gonna get our half inch binding and we're gonna start at the top and I'll show you how we're going to do this um, so that we can make the little loop so that everything can go through and look nice all right, so we have our binding. And again, this is just pre-made binding that I buy off of Amazon. Uh, and what I do for the, and I know there's so many good ways to do this, but I'm just, I'm just making it look as best as I can here. I probably should look up a better way of doing it. If you have a video that shows a better way of doing this, let me know. But I make a triangle. I fold the top of the triangle in and then I fold my two other sides in on each other. All right, I am going to start away from my hole. So my hole is right here. So I'm gonna to start to the left of that hole and I am going to clip that into place like so. And then right at the hole, I'm gonna turn it upwards a little bit, but I'm gonna clip that also and then over the hole I'm just letting like a little just letting it open a little bit um kind of making like a little a little loop there all right because that's gonna my hanger is gonna come out this way and I'm gonna put that to the front so I'm gonna kind of go start slightly going back down clipping it like so, and then wrapping it around. So I'm gonna do that all the way around to seal all my edges. When I get to a corner, I just do the little triangle fold like so. And I clip that to hold that in place because that's the area where you can start going off because you're turning it. And sometimes the, your feed dog can pull, pull that apart. So we're just gonna keep wrapping it around. Last corner. And then for here at the top, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna I usually come out to about my where my second clip is. I'm gonna just cut this across like so. Set that aside. And now I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm going to open it up, I'm going to fold it in a triangle, I'm gonna fold it downwards. And then I'm gonna fold those two inwards. All right, and now that's going to land, it's gonna cover. So I'm going to clip this in place. I'm going to then clip that in place. And now my fold unfolded. So I have to redo it and this is the tricky part when it's so tiny, but you can do it. Fold it, fold it, and then to make it look nice, just making sure that it's all pieced together. I'll use one of these to hold that in place, okay? So 
I'm going to start my top stitch though, not here where I have that fold. I'm going to start it down here where the other fold is. Okay, so now I'm going to start my stitch down here where before, so my end fold is here, my beginning fold is down here. I'm going to start before that my top stitch. That way I'm sure to catch everything and it makes sure that it lines up real nicely. So again, we're still doing our top stitch and we're going to um, back stitch the beginning and the end with something like this is completely fine to back stitch the beginning and the end. And I'm just doing, I'm a little bit over my quarter inch. That way I'm sure to catch everything and I'm following it. Now, here's where my hole is. So what I wanna do is I'm going to turn and go, still sewing my, my, my binding together, but I'm gonna turn to come up so this hole stays open. There we go. Clip our stitches here. Everything kind of looks like it's on, except for right here at the beginning, which is always my issue. Let's see here. And that's because of my fold. So you gotta remember that where your fold is, sometimes you're further here than you are in the back. So I'm going to stitches across again these are for my sewing room so if they're a little sloppy it's no big deal good yeah everywhere else we that was the only spot again that's the place that you always want to be mindful of is the back where you're folded over where your folds meet you want to make sure that those those are good but we have it we have our project bag all finished all binded ready to go ready to add our hanger so as you can see if i was going to try to fit this hanger in there it would not fit because my binding is right here on the edge so it's going to make it buckle if I try to shove it in there. Um, what what I found, if you wanna make yours a little bit bigger, you totally could, um, but what I found that makes these have a little bit nicer structure, unless you want to add more interfacing, quilt it, you can do a lot of other things to make this not as floppy. Um, I found if I bend my hanger a little bit in that direction, like so, if I do this now, when I add my hanger, again, you want to find that little hole in the top and we're going to keep the binding part to the front. Now, when I add that, it kind of pushes a little bit to the outside. So once I have things in it, it's going to hang really nice. So that is my project bag pattern for you all. The link in the comments gives you the measurements for you um, and all the links to all the supplies and tools that I've used. Well, friends, we're finished. We have completed our project bag for our sewing rooms, um, our creativity corners. Uh, if you're like me, having a small craft room sometimes is super frustrating because it feels like you don't have the space to do all the things that you want to do. Um, but many times it's also a good thing because I would get totally squirreled off in another direction if I wasn't looking my projects in the face. Now this, like I said, allows me to be able to work on those projects. 
cutting everything out beforehand is a great way to get ahead of things. Um, however, then they're in your way. Um, so this allows you to, to put everything for your project once it's cut out, your pattern, all the things, your hardware. Um, you know, I've even thought about like adding another little piece that has like, here's the things that I need to order for this project. Um, so that way I can kind of like go through and be like, because sometimes, you know, you're like, oh, I don't have that piece of hardware or I need a certain type of interfacing for this project. Um, so, and you already have all the pieces cut out and then they get strewn around your room. I've been using these three that I've had for almost a month and I can't tell you how nice it's been to just kind of be like, okay, what project I've been working on? I'm going to go in here, pull it out, get to work on it. Oh, I need to order that piece. I need to order that piece of fabric or that coordinating uh, piece of hardware, whatever it is. Oh, my pattern's all here. I'm not searching for a piece of it. Um, it's really, really nice to have these. And I have chosen to hang it right here in my face <laughs> so that, um, again, the projects don't get out of sight, out of mind, but they are protected and they are kept in one spot. So I hope that this project brings you that same level of feeling like you're organized and you're not biting off more that you can chew. I just like to share with you all the healing part of crafting. I always share that crafting is the healing part sewing is the healing part, whatever craft you do. Really, I believe that there is a healing within that for each of us. And for me, these project bags really brought up in my head the healing part of biting off more than you can chew. So many of us, especially as creative people, struggle with, I want to do all the things. I want to have all the things. I want to be able to make that, do that, be that, go there. Um, we struggle with this um, just biting off more than we can chew, having more on our plate than what can fit in our stomach, however you want to spin it. Uh, and so for me, having a small cr uh, creativity corner, place where I'm crafting, um, it definitely sometimes I would make, so, like cut out so many projects and then feel so overwhelmed to get them done. Not that I want these project bags to be something that creates an out of sight, out of mind feeling, but the fact that I'm only going to have five of them means that at any one point, I can't have more than five projects cut at a time. And for me, that is a healing part because it also helps with any type of anxiety I have. I know that those are the projects that I have wanted to make. Um, and I, it kind of helps me from squirreling off into another direction. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that we can't change our minds, but I think so often it can be very difficult to kind of condense down what we're trying to focus on and what we're trying to do. So for me, the healing part of this project is definitely this is what you've bought you've bit off uh and now this is what you're going to chew uh and so helping me to be able to one use the things i have use the patterns i've purchased uh, and also keep everything in one place so that I can be sure that I have everything I need for that project uh, because so often we can get ahead of ourselves. So I hope that today this will help you think about what's something within your environment, your creativity corner, that you can say, how can I make that more condensed, more easy, um, and help you not bite off more than you can chew. About projects, I've decided for this year to start a Patreon. Uh, one of the things that I did not realize going into this, because I did not go into this to necessarily build a following or um, make anything from it. Uh, it was It's really because I love to sew. People kept encouraging me to teach people how to sew. And I thought, well, I live in an area where technically classes and things like that aren't something that I felt like I could do. I don't have the place to do that. Again, I have a corner. Uh, and so... Um, YouTube was the place where I felt, okay, I can do this and I see other people doing it. How hard can it be? Let me tell you y'all, this is hard and it's work, but it's fun work. So I'm not trying to discourage anybody from it, but at the same time, I leapt into it not even realizing what it was going to become. Uh, and I'm so grateful for what it has become. However, 
um, it does cost money. Uh, and so I'm starting a Patreon with four different levels. It's going to be my feathered friends of the farm. Uh, and that way you can choose if you'd like to support the channel, if you'd like to um, encourage me in that way, if you'd like to receive some little extras, um, this will be a way that I can not only kind of build this channel and build this part of our farm, um, but also make sure that I have the resources to do so. And with that, that's our first video of the new year. I hope you will click on the down arrow to access all the details of this video, whether it be that you're looking for the tools that I used, the pattern measurements that I have, um, joining my Facebook group, um, accessing our, our handcrafted shop, or becoming one of the feathered friends of the farm. Uh, I truly appreciate you. Please click subscribe so that you can catch our next video. I try to le release them every Monday morning at 7 a.m. Uh, and uh, have a beautiful week. Remember, that the healing part of your craft is always the crafting part. There is something within your craft that is giving you healing. It's up to you to find it.